So welcome to another MTD CNC podcast uh, on the road with MTD CNC, which is broadcast every Friday evening at six o'clock. I did make the mistake of calling it on the run with MTD, uh, I think two weeks ago, so I have to apologise for that. Uh, this is the show where we talk about everything we've been up to this week, the technologies that we've seen, what we've learnt, uh, who we've seen, and we also touch on where we're going to be in the uh, in the week ahead of us and have a little bit of fun, if we can, depending on who I'm joined by along the way. Um, I like to mix this up as well, so today um, I've got Lindsay Vickers with us. Hi, Lindsay. How are you Hello. doing? Hello. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Good, good. And and Geo with us as well. Are you hey, keeping Paul. all right, mate? Very well, thank you. Not too bad. Good, good, good. There's been lots of stuff going on this week. We've had um, an unforgettable live show for Starag, which we'll talk about. Um, we also went to uh, Rimstock on Monday to look at how alloy wheels are made. Uh, we've been to Arnold Rag. We've been to Scotland to Abbey Tool and Gage. Uh, we've also been, or Lindsay's been up to Huddersfield. And you've had um, Mr. Mike Harris here from uh, Bison in for technical corners as well this week. So loads to come in today's show. Um, but as always, to start with this, um, Lindsay, are you keeping okay? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm very happy. I am keeping busy. You've got me going up and down the country, but it's fantastic. And you're looking forward to the weekend? This week it's going to rain once again. Uh, it's going to rain. Yeah, but no, 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 no. Right, I'm going to disagree with this, right? The <laughs> iPhone app says rain all the time and you look at your iPhone app. However, if you go on to the other apps like BBC and other companies, it's actually quite nice. And... It's other not, apps are available. Yeah, other apps <laughs> are, are available. But it's actually, it's not as bad as don't be negative, don't be drab. It's gonna, we're we, going to see some sunshine. Well, you said the same. You said on Sunday, you actually went out. It was going to rain. rained all day where I was on Sunday. But you said it was actually sunny for you all day. You managed to get out with the boys. Yeah. And I well, also heard you had a parents' evening last week. Colin mentioned on last week's show. <laughs> you, passed, you passed everything with flying colours. Yeah, apparently. I was really <laughs> impressed with him. And, um, and, and yeah, we thought it was going to rain all day Sunday because of our... Uh, Apple app and yeah. we were really surprised you know I went out for a jog Sunday morning it's absolutely beautiful so I got back home I says Nikki get the boys we're going out and we just went out and, and made the most for it most of it and it was just such a bonus we had a barbecue lovely really, lovely, really nice well, we I had a barbecue li- I must, outside I must live in the wrong place I mean with your um, Italian blood Gio you must you must not like this sort of cold and damp weather you must prefer the sunshine. And I the get heat. I get down in the winter months. I don't like it. I, I've got to admit. I mean, I I'm happier when it's sunny. I feel happy. I feel alive when it's sunny. The winter months are a bit dreary, I've got, aren't I've they? I've got a saying. It's What's a that? bit rude, but I think when the weather's nicer, I think life is easier the less clothes you wear. <laughs> and I'm not talking about nudists or anything like that. But don't you just find, without having to go out the house and put like a hat on and gloves and everything Coats like that, and, and just put a pair of shorts and a little top on, it, life is easy. You get places quicker. Well, well, I used to know a guy that, that never bought a coat because he just he just gets through winter. He's like, I don't want the hassle of having a coat because I'm only going to use it for six months of the year. But he, I bet he's uh, I bet he's not happy at the moment. Um, Gio, on Italy, all right, I'm going to ask you a few facts because you have got it, it, Italian oh, heritage. What's the population of the country? I'd say probably I don't know, fifteen million. Fifteen. What do you think? I Lindsay? think it's more than that. Goodness, we're sixty six million in the UK. So I'd have said about. 35? 60 million. Is it really? 60 million, yeah. And where was the first pizza invented? In which, <laughs> in, in which town? I'd say Napoli. Or Naples. Yeah. yeah. And, and would you believe they have the lowest birth rate uh, in the world, with 23% of, of uh, the community in Italy being over 65 years of age. Yes, I did know Not that. Not much procreation like happening there. <laughs> um, right, okay, let's uh, start with where we started this week. So um, we were at Rimstock on Monday. Uh, Lindsay, it was, it was a brilliant visit, wasn't it? We learned so much about how alloy wheels are made. I've never even thought about how an alloy wheel was made until I got there. But to see the process that it goes through from start to finish was, was terrific, wasn't it? It was really good. It was really good, yeah. We, we had two or three of those it was on the day. tiring, but yeah. really good. I'm sorry. No, it was. It was fast. <laughs> I've got that written down. No, it was brilliant. And to see so many different varieties, I couldn't get over it. And the one thing that I could not believe is the fact that it comes from a 10-inch billet. So, you know, a normal 10-inch billet. And the processes that go through, they're all very, um, I've forgotten the word now, um, vertically integrated. Didn't forget it. So they've got their forge, they heat it. So you've literally all on one side within two kind of facilities where you go from downstairs to upstairs, you can see this billet change 
in each process into a finished wheel. It is fascinating. And we learned also about the spokes and how different depths of spokes and the science behind it, different depths of spokes, the more spokes, you have to change the spokes because it has to hold the integrity of the rim. So we saw not only the designs, they look sexy, um, but there's a lot of science and technology behind them. And it was truly, truly fascinating to think when we went to this company, I thought to myself, it's good. I'm not quite sure what we're going to get out of today because you, 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 we go to quite high profile businesses and often they say, look, do you know what? You, you can't film, you can't film the part, but you can't film the process either. And you sort of like, I really want to get the message out to how, how these things are made. But it was to see those little sawn blanks go yeah. from a slug almost into an alloy wheel. Halfway through the process, it's called a pancake. Yeah, right? So it basically <laughs> goes excited. into 500, <coughs> 540 degrees, this slug goes in. And when it comes out, it's then it's then uh, pressed, isn't it, in, into mm. like a pancake. And then, have you ever seen a metal spinning machine? Yes. Do you know where they form things? Then yeah, that yeah, happens yeah. then for the wheel. Yeah. Then what happens is it goes onto a vertical lathe where they rough turn all the outside diameter and the inside bore. Then it comes off of that and goes into the milling operation, which in this instance, the reason we were there, they've just purchased three, yeah, not, not one or two, but three Matsura horizontal machining mm -hmm. centres with, with integrated pallet systems. And then that's where all the milling is done. Once that's finished, it then comes off of the mill. It goes back onto a vertical lathe for just a, a very sort of lick up, doesn't it, of the, yeah. of the final OD and the ID. Um, we know it doesn't the finish there oh, it's because it goes balanced. off to get painted, painted and, and then you and can balance. have like diamond finishing or different colours. There's like over a hundred different finishes you can have. So that like that's not the final process. And, and it's also balanced as well yes. at, the, yeah. at the end of the process. Um, but the machining of the internal bore of the wheel, which, the, which goes on the axle, what do you think that would be machined to? What tolerance? Well, I, I, I know the answer to that now, unfortunately. <laughs> so probably you, you, you better, lie, can better give the answer to that, Paul. It's 50 microns. Yeah. 50 microns. I thought it'd be tighter than that, mm. but, but still um, brilliant, uh, fantastic visit. Also on Monday, um, a big shout out to... Um, uh, to Paul from Arnold Rag, Paul Brunton. I know that uh, big into the aerospace sector, some really good news coming out of, of his company, that aerospace is beginning to pick up again. They make fasteners and various other componentry. Um, and I know every business that's been involved in, in various industries, certainly the aerospace sector, has really found it hard mm. in the last year, but things mm. seem to be picking up on that front. Just an interesting fact as well, while we talk about that, um, I did find some things out about the uh, aircraft industry this week now uh, how much do you think a boeing 747 weighs i don't have any idea well, i know boeing it's got i'd say well it's mm. now you did really badly 100, 100, 100, 150 ton okay well, it's 180 tons of okay, boeing 747 yeah. but, but but this is what i learned that that aircraft seats 366 people okay mm. so you've got 100 air, 180 ton aircraft which six 366 people the new dreamliner 787 and this is where you begin to see my train of thought actually weighs only 115 tons okay but has a carrying capacity of 323 people so the reason that those aircraft are now reaching further afield is because they're much lighter and much efficient. Yeah, I know okay. I'm talking about something that's very obvious here, but it just goes to show that these aircraft manufacturers, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the Dreamliner isn't made out of, of aluminium or titanium. They actually print a lot of the parts, so it's yeah. a lot yeah. lighter. So therefore, the, the aircraft can reach further um, and still almost accommodate as many people. But what, what about lo like logistics? What, what about are they trying to open up areas so you can get logistics and trans you know taking parts from different countries to countries? or anything is that a part of the consideration or is it just commercial like well I'm, I'm not sure actually i'm sure all of these Both aircraft they rip the seats yeah, out and they use them great. to carry goods all around yeah, the world you know yeah. someone like dhl may in fact now buy dreamliners in order to ship their their parts but know. the the sort of silver lining on this which i've i've found really fascinating was that an a380 you know the a380s which are now been taken out of production um, they actually have 525 seats on them. So there's a lot more capacity. However, they weigh 589 tonnes. Wow. So you think how much fuel and how inefficient that sounds. We talk about efficiency on machines and stuff. 
it's just comparing the, the three different aircraft. So anyway, that's just... I was <laughs> reading something just to add to that as well. I don't, don't know the facts and figures, but it's interesting when you see how much fuel and everything an aircraft mm. uses, and they say it can one trip in one of these aircrafts or something um, can fuel like a farm um, for 11 years and wow. stuff like that. Yeah, I was reading something, you know, on the social what, media that pops up, what, and you just think, well... Where, where, you know, does that have to happen? Does that, you know, fueling a farm and that, for, for then, you know, that farm will feed thousands and thousands of people over 11 years and yet that's just for one trip. Yeah. Like, bonkers. But, but you just uh, think if it was down to geo, none of this would exist anyway. <laughs> would it? Yeah, so you won't, you won't even get, I'd on, get, the boat. get on a plane. Get but, on it, the, yeah. but it is why now the, the, the flights can go from Sydney to New York, mm. from London to Perth. These aircraft, you don't have to stop anymore because they're so efficient. Um, right. Anyway, that's a bit of a taking a bit of a um, sidestep. Sidestep there, yeah. So uh, Arnold Rags was on Monday. Now Tuesday, we're going to talk about this live event that um, uh, Starag had here that we did at the office. They wanted to promote their their new Hecat machine, H sixty five horizontal four axis machining centre. Did you watch? Yes, the beginning. Yeah. The beginning? Yeah, the, the beginning. beginning. No, I have a three-year-old, and th- Tuesdays are my day off. So it's very <laughs> difficult when she's uh, pulling <laughs> pulling at me. But um, no, it was quite interesting. And it, um, I saw the first comments coming in about people saying, you know, where's this going to sit in the marketplace? What I liked about it and what made it a really easy watch from an MTD perspective is actually someone explaining it, then it coming back here and actually seeing the machine in action. I think that's really, really important for people to see the applications and exactly where it sits in the market. It's always hard to try and deliver a live message from here yeah. because it's quite a static environment there's not chips flying everywhere and I think that was the great thing about this event there was a little bit of both there was quite quite technical discussions but at the same time we cut to the Germans and by the way this is actually on our YouTube channel now there was a morning session and an afternoon session um, you can find it on our YouTube channel or in fact uh, on LinkedIn or Facebook where we streamed it live um, it did get uh, thousands of watches um, and and the retention of the watch was actually over fifteen minutes, which is it's pretty Excellent. pretty yeah. impressive yeah. for a live show. So as I say, if you're interested in horizontal machining, um, these machines, I'll, I'll let you watch the program for more technical detail. But what I can say is they've got quite a big capacity. They're very fast. Um, they're they're built they're built to deliver. Uh, you know, e- economically, um, very, very powerful and, uh, yeah, a great addition to Starag's portfolio, especially if you're looking at high-speed machining um, on exotic materials, but aluminiums as well because they do a lot of different spindles. So, uh, and also on Tuesday, Colin was at Desmond Engineering. Now, this is a company that I know um, we visited uh, just before or just after lockdown. Mm-hmm. This is a business, as you move north, you always find heavier machining, don't you? And there's a great yeah. example there. They've got Toshiba vertical lathes. They've got Huachon sort of 15-inch chuck machines. They've also got a lot of vertical lathes. And, and I mean, you, you know, why, why do you think people use these verticals? Because they haven't got big muscles. In them. <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? Yeah. The gravity fall away. Oh, gosh. But it is true. And when Desmond you- will be on the phone. But it is true. The vertical lathe is something I think in this country is not as sold as frequently as it should. Just, but, but you know, by the very nature. I, I think that now that you've got vertical lathes with milling capability, there's definitely um, more applications that lend themselves to a, to a vertical lathe than, than, than meets the eye, really. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Big machine shop with lead well machines as well. Working uh, a lot in the rail, and I believe um, they're working in the oil and gas and the aviation sector. All reports say, uh, back from from Colin who visited, that that's a company that's doing very well at the moment and very busy, so that's always good to hear. Next up, Abbey Tool and Gage. Joe and Ian um, travelled together all the way up to Scotland. Oh, I know, To Scotland, seven hours in the... They could eat in a restaurant. They, yeah, I don't know how that works. How does that work? So well, the rules are different. The rules there. are different up there. So I think he was very, very excited about this, that Ian was, because he it was quite a long journey. He was like, I can actually go out and eat inside <laughs> food. <laughs> like you won't get much if Joe's there, though, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what's on the menu. I'm sure he's listening to this, but I know they had... Joe's lost a stone as well, would you believe, in the last... He was telling me today. He's, he's doing lost well. a stone. I was going to mention... In his back garden. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just know what you're like. He has, he has lost a stone, and we, t- we, we joke, but we talk... 
together oh. about we both use this app which you can basically it plots your your BMI loss it plots your body fat it, it d- does all of that and when he t- when we were comparing today I said what's your BMI and his BMI is still slightly higher than mine which is a good thing but he really is <laughs> on, on a mission he's, he's, yeah, he's well done to both of you thank you very you're much you're going to slip through a drain soon. <laughs> but, but the, 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 the story was uh, Abby Tall and Gage um, about using Rocole's products in order to um, make their machining more efficient but the ultimate uh, aim was to basically save money, and that's what's happened here. They reckon that they're saving somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand pounds a year by changing to Rocol's um, mm-hmm. f- fluids. Uh, what experience have you got on that front, Jim? I think that coolant can reduce cost per part, so it, it, it does that in many ways. So, kind of uh, increasing um, tool life longevity is is one of the main aspects of, of that because. People don't realise or it's overlooked that, you know, the, the cutting fluid is the thing that gives your cutting tools lo- greater longevity, but not only that, better surface finish. Um, and when you're looking to run overnight and stuff like that as well, when you're automating, again, you need that confidence that the cutting tools are not going to break or burn out, for example. But, so the, but the interesting thing is that this this actual, these, these the product that they purchased actually is more expensive per litre than than some of their competition but the efficiency of the product is so much more the savings are made so you think when you some, hear of someone saying i'm saving 20 or thirty thousand pounds it's because they're buying something that's cheaper but but no. the, the, the the cheapness call it or the cost comes in the value of the product doesn't yeah. it i'll back mm. that up as well a and m edm in birmingham they they said it was twenty thousand pounds saving instantly a year so, same, same, same product um same a product yearly Lindsay, i believe 20, so yeah. if, um if i'm wrong forgive me yeah. or or is that instant saving i don't know there was also something to do with the fact that it's um, better on um their Hands, um, operators yeah. as well they, yeah. they were so happy with it literally over the moon with it mm. and it extends beyond that as well to the life of the machine from a, from a maintenance perspective if you've got good quality product you've got less wear on 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 guideways on linear rails on you know everything that happens in the machine so and i know that abby tool and gauge up in roxburgh is a very big company in fact one of scotland's largest manufacturers so some exciting uh, exciting stuff to come out of there um wednesday uh, you went to Huddersfield. Andy, I tell did, us all about that. yeah. Chris and I went up to Huddersfield. We went to a, a lovely company um, and met a lovely gentleman called Mark Kelly, who I nicknamed Willy Wonka. Um, I'll tell you why For in a what moment. Reason? Oh. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, and the company's called Fleming Seals and Polymers. I think it's a company that's been around since 1911, I think he said. Um, but he bought the company a few years ago. And he's transformed it. He's done really, really well. And recently he's looked at buying a vertical machining centre, to which he did a lot of research. And he went, he looked at companies in the UK, unbranded machines, Japanese machines as well. And then he ended up going with a Herco. And he is over the moon. The operator um, is operating three different machines. And he said, by far the Herco's program and software and everything is just the easiest in terms of like even just down to the drop down menus and stuff he goes it's just easy like it's uh, in the nicest way possible it's making my life so much easier as an operator um and another thing that really sold it to him which fascinates me is so he's making polyurethane parts he's also cutting metal um they're making all sorts of injection molding but um, he made this part and it was so slim, like it was microns, it was bonkers out of this polyurethane material. So it's a little ring and it's really, really, really slim um, and other parts very similar. But he found that the Herco was the best machine to make it on. And because he's after making uh, making small batches, what they did is Herco got a bar puller. Oh, okay. Or as one of the tools, instead of him having to have a um, oh, yeah, a, a bar feed, a bar feed. Oh, and hang on. So, so it's got a, was it a lathe or a vertical machine centre you're talking? Sorry, about? So did I say vertical? Yeah, okay. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, they look the that same. was one That's of the machines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, sorry, it was a lathe. My apologies. So let's backtrack. Was it a TM10 or TM? TM. Eight, eight. I. Okay, yeah, so yeah. my apologies. So yeah, so he's got this bar puller to pull this through. So we, but to, so instead of getting the bar feed, it saved him space. And then the bar puller just comes in because he's working on small batches anyway, just leaves it running and running and running because they're only very, very slim parts that he's making. And he's just like, I'm just winning <laughs> at this. He's over the moon with this machine. And just to add to that, because I'm talking a lot, but um, he's got a citizen sliding head machine, 
absolutely loves it. He loves the fact that, you know, you can do large quantities, large batch work. But what he's now thinking is, I'm going to do small batch work and use my location here in the UK as his niche in terms of saying, well, I can't always compete with places like China and Europe and different places. What, Huddersfield? Uh, <laughs> Huddersfield. Uh, <laughs> as bad as Nuneaton. <laughs> <laughs> Worse but, than Nuneaton. Uh, I think more the, the, the UK <laughs> location. Um, but that's what his niche is and it's working for him. And they have grown the company. I can't quite remember the exact stats, uh, but within just three years from where they were three years ago. So they are over the moon with their recent purchases. Okay, get on to the good bit. Willy Wonka? Willy Wonka. Um, So he basically, he invents different parts for, he himself is a bit of an engineer and a bit of an entrepreneur. So he invents different parts. He's doing something for nozzles um, and he's creating, (laughs) but they're all colourful. So when you're in there, he was saying like, it is a bit of a messy process and it is like, there was loads of colourful different plastics everywhere. And it literally was like, we walked into a chocolate factory. I'm going to tell you one more product that he makes as well down to, to do with sewage and it's like this big metal ball <laughs> and encased in polyurethane is this ball this ball so they're really really heavy big balls right that go into the sewage pines <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you this but it's it's one of the products at the end of the day it's engineering um like a ball cock thing that goes in the top of the toilet um, no, yes, but on a major scale. So when all of the waste goes down, one of these big bad boy balls goes down after it and then it never comes back up. So thank Mark Fleming. <laughs> so you can't, it's, it's not recycled, but it's not used. It, 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 no, it's because it's so heavy and the yeah. power of it, it pushes it all the, the dirt <laughs> and the rubbish and the, you know, beep, yeah. um, through and then it never comes back up the waste pipes. So thank Mark Fleming, <laughs> Mark Kelly, sorry, at Fleming Seals and Polymers for all of our sewage <laughs> solutions. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, that's what, the, Willy Wonka. Well, I, what I would <laughs> add to that is the turning side of Herco's Pro- product portfolio is is becoming as popular now as their vertical machining centers yeah. and i you know and i don't want to take anything away from the machine because they're, they're they're good workhorse machines predominantly in in years gone by very good tool room machines but now production machines as well but that control it, as you identified Absolutely and as the operator blessing. says really is is the big winner there okay Great. on to um on to uh thursday uh geo you had to your 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 friend and our friend mr mike harris here didn't you um Let's not worry about the technology. What about the jokes? Did you get many? Oh, of those? He, 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 he cracked an old joke. Um, I know Joe that's recording the podcast today. Um, had the pleasure to hear it. Um, I'd, I'd heard Is it, it before. Uh, it's a bit rude for the for the podcast, unfortunately. <laughs> but Mike, I'm sure we'll. Uh, Joe, is it funny? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's shrugging giving his, his shoulders a but no nice to see him he's back off furlough now um, and we've just done some technical corners on their power chuck range so they're, they're well renowned for their scroll chucks um, but they've not really been renowned for their power chuck range and they've got a real nice um, new product the quick change chuck that also lends itself to automation so you can actually um, automate setups on a lathe What so is it a little bit like other quick change chucks where you you, you, you it, yeah so, so, so the the master base jaw comes out with the actual jaw. Yeah. So the connections on the uh, on the diameter of the chuck um, has got a socket that the robot can change the jaw with. So it's quite unique, really. It, it, there's other manufacturers that do quick change chucks, but not necessarily. Um, they lend themselves to automation and changing setups overnight. So with a little bit of kind of. Um, playing with the robot and getting the right connection, the robot could actually change the jaws overnight and change the setup. What's he been doing for a year on furlough? I don't know. That's a good question, Paul. <laughs> Gio, <laughs> whose jokes are better, Mike's or Paul's? Sorry? Whose jokes are better, Mike's or Paul's? I've got to go with you, Paul. And that is a... Co- <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sorry, that's Mike. Because maybe he's sorry, the MD the company you work for. But I no, like your Mike's joke. are rather, rather bad. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> They're like Carver's. If you've never um, had spent a day with Carver, he, he is a classic joke man. <laughs> and before Love we it. talk about where we're going to be next week, I just wanted to touch on a couple of news stories that have been on the website this week. Uh, that's what we also do in this show. We talk about some of the videos that have, uh, have been released. In fact, there's been 25 new videos on the MTD um, website this week. There's been um, quite a focus on on cutting tools on the news. But on the video side, there's been uh, product uh, videos from you, Lindsay, that you did with uh, Eric at Kitter, um, at Dugard on the oh, Kitamura yes. 5-axis machine, which has gone yeah, exceptionally well. Yeah, the Medicenter. Well. 
Yeah. I mean, you did a great job on the video, but I have to say that that machine really is so exciting. So exciting for Dugard. Really small, compact, five-axis tiny, machine. Tiny, tiny machine. You know, people do want small machines. They want economical, small, fast machines that are, are capable of, you know, even if they... And I'm not suggesting the Kitamura can't because it's still a, a box guide way machine, so it can take some big cuts. But machining strategies these days do help um, with, you know, metal removal, especially on, on fast machines. To add to that as well, the first comment underneath was someone who commented who said, well, how much is it? Yeah. So straight off, there's yeah. interest. Also, it's called MediCenter, but they don't want to pigeonhole themselves into just the medical sector. I don't sector. think they need to, no. no. I, 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 and, and they shouldn't because it is... It, that will go that machine it's in stock it will not be there for long I can no. guarantee I wouldn't be surprised if it's in fact I'm going to uh, Dugard on the 26th of May I'm yeah. sure it will be uh, I'm sure it will be sold by then uh, we also got some good videos can from I just uh, give my friend a call out who started at uh, Dugard's yeah. uh, David Rawson so um well, he's, he's loving it. He's, he's, he's really enjoying it. I think he's also sold a few machines already. So yeah, well yeah. Done. Well, what 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 a what a, a range to be able to offer the Schmeck, which yeah. they're carrying in stock there. There are lots of stock. Lots of stock. Big chucking machines as well. Yeah. Um, also, the the Kitamuras amongst then their their other sort of flagship mm -hmm. Dugard VMCs and stuff. So I'm sure David will do. He's he's, he's, he's really loving it. David um, will and do well. Yeah, good machine tool range. Also, videos that we had on the website uh, come from companies like Metal Light, where. Uh, Chloe and I looked at a, the integration of a Euro system on a Quasar machine, done exceptionally well. Um, some videos from Matsura that we did at RNG Precision have done really well as well. Yeah, so thousands it's been, of views. It's it's been a it's been a good week on on the channel. It's a good week for for manufacturing as well yeah. as we still hear that um, companies are very busy on the tool in front. We've got new products from ITC. Uh, on the tapping side, Goering's new parting system, and on the machine side, the launch of a new Fanuc Robo Cut machine, which is uh, all new stories on the website, plus a lot more. Uh, 25 new videos and probably more new stories than that as well, so plenty to see if you visit mtdcnc.com. There was also a new 5-axis machine from Takumi. Did you see that? Yes, I've seen like that. Another small, yeah, small um, footprint I mean, they're, they're doing machine. so well. They're doing so well, and I think that they, they will make um, big inroads in the UK market for sure. I think that not only they look a lovely machine, but they've got some real nice USPs. They have. Um, and and the, the range from Groupus Parpus that Leader CNC Technologies also offer. Um, real where? specific range. From where? Groupus Parpus. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Chew. <laughs> so, on to next week. Now, just going to skip through the diary because time is against us a little bit. I know on Monday, Lindsay, you're out with Colin. Uh, you're going to Caffin, Caffin. Caffin. Caffin Engineering. Oh, that's in Oxford. In Oxford. Yeah, I yeah. thought that would be Welsh for some reason. Yeah, so did I, yeah. yeah. Um, I've got to spend a day with Colin. I've got to spend a day with Colin, oh. unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I completely concur with your thoughts on that. <laughs> having spent many many a day with him. I know I think you're here, Gio, on Monday. We've got a, a podcast for CG Tech. How well are these podcasts going at the moment? Pretty much everyone we speak to is not only listening, but they want to participate as well, yeah. which, you yeah. know... I think they're averaging now around 5,000 listens per podcast across all platforms, which is astonishing, really. And that's not just in the UK, that's around the world. So um, they're definitely gaining traction, um, and it's definitely a new um, format that seems to... Trouble is, it's not new. You asked Willie, who's doing podcasts in 2002. Yeah. You know, well, no, he wasn't. He was probably... They, they seem to be taking off again, though, Paul, don't yeah, they? Yeah. I, I don't it's know... It's when people have time in the car, and I think it's more of a relaxed situation when you've got podcasts. Yeah. So you're actually willing, you're there and want to listen to the content. And I think that's, you know, when it's a video, you, you've kind of only got a, t a really small window of opportunity, but a podcast is a totally different experience when you're listening to a form of media, definitely. Well, another thing is what I found as well with the podcast is some people may be may prefer to do a podcast and actually to be in front of camera yeah. and they can open up more and it also gives them the opportunity to speak about their subject in a lot more you're not depth trying to you're not trying to cram in yeah and that it's, it's, it's a lot it's, it's a lot more relaxed possible. for them they can really you, you can, can really deep dive into to subjects and um it, yeah it's brilliant absolutely um, brilliant Sorry to cut across with you. CG Tech, you're here, I think, doing some technical corners as well as a podcast. CG Tech, uh, for those that don't know, verification software. Um, 
Great product, did a live event. Uh, Lindsay, you and Mark did a live event a few weeks yeah, we ago. Did. Well received and, um, you know, there'll be some good, I'm sure, technical stories coming from them. Walter GB, they also have a, we also have a day filming there, some machining demos, which is on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, more technical corners here. Um, MSC have got a new product, which Colin keeps telling us about in the podcast, <laughs> yet he doesn't tell us what it is. So <laughs> you'll be in this time next week, if you tune in, you'll be able to find out what that product is because we've got MSC here in the studio. You're at Motorsport CNC next Wednesday. Well, that Lindsay, sounds exciting. Um, they, what do you think they make? Um, cutlery. <laughs> uh, so... Part well, actually, I don't know what they make. You find out when you get there. But they just out. bought uh, uh, another. It's another Herco story. Bought another uh, Herco machine. Their first kind of venture into CNC, I believe. Oh, okay. So that will uh, make a make a good visit. And um, I think, as I already said here, we have got yeah the podcast with MSC and plenty of other stuff going on. So um, that's been it for this week's podcast. Now, don't forget. Can we just have a joke off um, Mike? Can, can we just hear a Mike joke? Oh, it's too rude, Lindsay. I can't, <laughs> oh, I can't even I begin to... No, I have actually heard it, and to be honest, <laughs> it, it's, it, yeah. one, it's rude, two, it's poor. <laughs> like yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. There, is, there is absolutely no point Mike, you'll have to tell it me. Um, yeah, so brilliant for you guys to join me. Thank you very much for, for uh, coming here today, and, and, for your li- and for the listeners. Thanks for listening, and if you want to shout out during the show... Um, then please uh, let us know on whichever channel or platform that you're listening to this on, because you can also watch this on YouTube, which is something we do on this um, Friday on the road podcast with MTD CNC. Uh, look forward um, to speaking again and doing this again this time next week. Thanks, guys. for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.